Tonight's top European Union stories from the Unit UK include David Cameron, my seven targets for a new EU, EU regulatory fitness and subsidiary and proportionality, better lawmaking. European Union Directive pushes up life insurance costs for women. And the EU seeks Slovak-Ukraine gas link deal by end of April. Plus, US and EU threaten sanctions for South Sudan warring parties. Welcome to spring in the UK. Just a quick reminder that following the Europe debate on Wednesday evening, being aired by the BBC, the unit will be holding a live show via Google Hangouts. Broadcast live on our website at 12 noon GMT, we're also hoping to provide a phone in line so that you can join us live on the show with your questions and points of view. It's Monday, 31st of March. I'm Rick Timmis, and this is the unit nightly news. First up, the hot story from our website, theunituk.com. David Cameron, my seven targets for a new EU. David Cameron sets out the seven major changes he wants to make to the European Union to stop Britain being sucked into a United States of Europe. In an article for The Telegraph, the Prime Minister declares that he will campaign for Britain to stay in the EU in a referendum planned for 2017 if Brussels agrees to his terms. He discloses his broad agenda for renegotiating Britain's membership, including demands for reform to Europe's immigration, human rights and trade laws as the price for remaining in the EU. However, the Conservative leader warns right-wingers in his party that achieving these changes will take time and patience and urges Eurosceptics not to engage in shouting from the sidelines. I completely understand and share people's concerns about the European Union, Mr Cameron writes. Well, our team are looking at these proposals and you can expect more from us on this topic in the future. Stay tuned for an interesting correlation next. EU regulatory fitness and subsidiary and proportionality, better lawmaking. As Mr Cameron talks about his targets for regulatory reform, let us show you what our research team have uncovered. This article in our legislation section also highlights reforms that the EU will be undertaking irrespective of Mr Cameron's rhetoric. The committee calls on the Commission to step up its review of the application of the principle of proportionality, as it was pointed out by the Impact Assessment Board and by national parliaments that the principles of subsidiary and proportionality were not adequately addressed by the Commission in its impact assessments. The Commission is also required to come forward with further concrete proposals to reduce the overall EU regulatory burden without undermining health and safety at work. The Commission and Council, according to the Committee, need to engage with Parliament in negotiations on the criteria for appropriate applications of Article 290 and 291 of the TFEU, the Treaty for European Union. The Committee stipulates this can be done in the revision of the Inter-Institutional Agreement on Better Lawmaking. I explore the possibilities of introducing a white paper stage in the legislative process as this would allow stakeholders to comment on draft proposals and accompanying provisional impact assessments. Aha! We have our eyes peeled here at the unit. Just like the tobacco laws and legislation on marriage rights for the lesbian and gay community, Mr Cameron touts these changes and reforms as though they are within his control and he is party to the change. But in truth, they are simply implementations of EU diktat under the direct effect mechanism. Now, of course, Foreign and Commonwealth Office document 301048, that suppressed and secret government document that we obtained via the Freedom of Information Act, states very clearly the UK politicians are obligated to hide from view the workings of the EU. Watch this space. There is more to come.
EU directive pushes up life insurance costs for women. New rules to stop financial discrimination have seen the cost of life insurance shoot up for women. The EU imposed measures ban premium prices being set on the basis of gender. But women have been the big losers, with the cost of life insurance and mortgage protection policies rising by up to 25%. Men have seen the costs of their premiums fall by close to 30%, an analysis of the market carried out by Caledonian Life shows. The EU Gender Directive was introduced here at the end of 2012 to stop insurers charging different premiums based on gender. Traditionally, women paid less for life insurance and mortgage protection policies, a form of life insurance that pays out if the mortgage holder dies. Women used to pay less than men for life insurance because they live longer and therefore are less likely to die during the life of the policy. EU sees Slovak-Ukraine gas link deal by end of April. A reverse flow pipeline deal to ship gas from Slovakia to the Ukraine could be agreed before the end of April, European Energy Commissioner Gunter Ottinger said on Wednesday. The Commission, the EU executive, has been pushing for months to reach an agreement on a link from Slovakia to shore up Ukraine's gas supplies and reduce its dependence on Russia. Efforts have intensified as Russia's relations with both Ukraine and the European Union have hit a crisis over Russia's annexation of Ukraine's Crimea region. I'm quite optimistic we can come to an agreement before the end of April, Ottinger told reporters, adding talks with Slovakia would continue next week. Ottinger said he hoped work could begin on a new infrastructure as soon as possible after a deal is achieved, with the aim of completing it before the end of the year, in time for peak winter demand. Following previous gas crises involving disruption of Russian gas supplies to the Ukraine, a major transit route for Russian gas, the European Union has been working on improving security of supply. Now, of course, UK government will more than likely use this energy supply story to shore up its argument that fracking the living daylights out of UK bedrock is the only answer. US and EU threaten sanctions for South Sudan warring parties. Keeping up the flow of information to our readers on the influence and political activity taking place across the African continent, this article sees the EU and the US working together in Sudan. South Sudan's government and rebel forces face possible sanctions if they fail to progress with peace talks and stick to a ceasefire deal, United States and European Union envoys warned on Wednesday. The European Union stands ready to consider targeted restricted measures against individuals obstructing the political process, EU envoy Alexander Rondos told reporters. And US envoy Donald Booth, speaking alongside him, said Washington was also considering what measures might be taken. Peace talks mediated by the East African IGAD bloc between the government and rebels are due to resume in Ethiopia, but have so far made little, if any progress. Now, remember to visit our website, theunituk.com, for all the very latest news. You can find our page on Facebook by searching for The Unit UK, all one word. Join our community on Google+, where you can interact with us, voice your opinions and post comments about our stories and even get involved in the shows. For all the latest tweets as they happen, then follow us on Twitter, at The E Unit. And of course, please don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. I'm Rick Timmis, reporting for The Unit Nightly News. I'll see you soon.